What's good, y'all? So today I showed you how to make a contact sheet in Lightroom using just the tools that are in there, whether it's Negative Lab Pro or just the curves that are available in Lightroom. And those curves, just so you know, those are available in all kinds of programs, whether it's Photoshop or some third party kind of random program that allows you to mess around with photos. So nonetheless, contact sheets are super useful. I think contact sheets are great for a couple of reasons. Number one, they just look cool. Honestly, seeing all your pictures in one frame with the film borders and all that, it just looks cool. And as analog heads, people that love shooting film photography, it's really cool to see that because it's not something that you get when you shoot digital, for example. So that's just kind of the simple reason. There's other reasons though. I think the most important reason, honestly, is for organization. So if you're cataloging all of your scans and you know you have different folders with all your images, sometimes it can be tough to dig through all that and find what you're looking for. So what I typically do is for every single roll of film that I shoot, I'll create a contact sheet and I'll drop that contact sheet into the archival folder as well. So not only do I have all my scans of all the images that I actually got, but then I'll have one kind of JPEG that is the contact sheet itself. And if I'm looking through, let's say a roll of 36, you know, that's 36 photos. Instead of looking at the roll of 36, you can kind of just go on the contact sheet, zoom in and scroll around and you can find what you're looking for, perhaps a bit faster. Uh, might be different for other people. Maybe other people label their images with names and all that kind of stuff. I don't. So all I have is the date and the film stock and the camera that I was taken with. So it's nice to have the contact sheet to kind of just quickly scan all the images at once and very quickly identify what you're looking for. And that's pretty useful. Um, in the dark room, contact sheets are also very useful, but I don't make contact sheets in the dark room that often because I don't really, you know, I'd rather be printing individual images and color printing does take time. So I usually invest my time in actually in making individual images as opposed to making the contact sheets. I also don't have the proper holder for the negatives and my film sleeves aren't those plastic transparent ones. I use the wax paper ones. So I can't just put them down on top of a sheet of darkroom paper and make a contact sheet. So you know that's why I don't do it in the darkroom, but it's super easy as I just showed you. And it's really cool to show that off as well. On Instagram, for example, I've been posting a lot of my images with contact sheets. And I think people really like that. People really like seeing it. And I made a quick reel about how to make digital contact sheets and it kind of went crazy. So I figured I'd make a video about it because there's probably people on here that don't follow me on Instagram and want to know how to make contact sheets. So go ahead and give it a try. Like I said, you don't need Negative Lab Pro. Obviously that makes it significantly easier, easier, but you saw how quickly I was able to actually get a really good looking positive image by just playing with the curves. You set your white balance first based on the film border and then you go ahead and invert your main curve, your tone curve, and that'll give you a positive image. And then you just kind of go into the individual color curves and pull those in either direction um, to basically finesse the color that you're looking for in your image. With contact sheets, of course, you're doing the, the edits on the entire contact sheet. So, you know, if, if you have various exposures on your film roll and there's a bunch that are underexposed, for example, those are not gonna look better than other ones in the contact sheet. You basically have to pick one image and use that as your frame of reference. So I would say pick your image that is best exposed and go with that. And then that'll actually let you know pretty quickly if other images are overexposed or underexposed. And that's actually another useful thing that I mentioned earlier. Using contact sheets is helpful when scanning because for example, if you have a roll of 36 and you did let's say 10 rolls of 36, that's a lot of photos. If you make 10 contact sheets before scanning any individual frame, you can look through the contact sheet and basically see what you think is worth scanning. Maybe in that roll of 36, there's five images that you really want to scan and invest your time in as opposed to scanning everything. So with the contact sheet, you can identify that and then go ahead and scan those individual images. For some people, they rather have every single image and that's actually, I'm one of those people, but I can see a situation where you don't want to scan every single image. Maybe there's just, you did a portrait shoot and there's 36 images and you want to identify pretty quickly which of those 36 are the best. Make a contact sheet, identify that, and then go in and scan each individual photo that you think is great. And you can really dedicate a lot of time and effort into that specifically. So contact sheets are useful. They're not just for aesthetics. It's also got a practical purpose, whether you're shooting in kind of the modern world where all your stuff is digital, let's say, your film scans obviously are digital, or even going back in time where contact sheets were used kind of as, as the basis of everything. All right, so I hope that was useful. Um, definitely give it a try. I think you're gonna fall in love with your contact sheets when you make them. So let me know in the comments if you think this is worth the time. And if you have some experience or any additional tips for people making contact sheets, definitely drop them below. All right, y'all, to the next video, I'm out.